My study centers on conduct literature. So what is it? In the context of Western Europe and in European settlements in North America, which is the geographical and cultural space on which my study focuses, it is a genre whose purpose is to instruct young men and women of high social standing on proper behavior. It emerged as a proper genre in the Middle Ages. And from the 13th century, important works about the education of young people could be found throughout the European continent, from England to Italy. Works of conduct literature could take many forms, from sermons and devotional writings to instructional manuals and poems. These works were primarily directed at young women and dictated they were to be pious, prudent, modest, and chaste. Conduct literature flourished in the 16th century and well into the early modern period. As in the Middle Ages, the genre in the early modern Europe was rooted in religious ideals, which during the both time periods and spaces in question meant Christian ideals. Indeed, the majority of these manuals were written by male clerics. Role models were important rhetorical devices in all forms of conduct literature and served an important didactic purpose. Often, these role models were highly Christian in nature, and authors of conduct literature drew from biblical figures, in particular the Virgin Mary, but also women from the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament. Prior to the Reformation and afterwards in parts of Western Europe where Protestantism did not take hold, saints were commonly put forth as examples to live by. Female virgin martyr saints, young women who died in defense of their purity, seem to have been of particular interest in conduct literature for girls. Conduct literature was at its height in Iceland, the specific space on which my study focuses, during its early modern period, which was roughly from 1500 to 1800. As elsewhere in Western Europe, the literature from this period in Iceland was closely linked to Lutheran orthodoxy and the rules of conduct laid out in Luther's table of duties. Poetry was an effective and important vehicle for conduct literature in early modern Iceland. Manuscript evidence shows that hundreds of poems were written and copied for young girls and detail ideals for behavior and appropriate models. The key virtues expressed in early modern Icelandic conduct literature for young women, both poetry and prose, were industriousness and cleanliness, honor and decency, chastity, elegance, temperance, and frugality. These works also identified important role models. Not surprisingly, many of these were biblical women. Interestingly, though, despite the fact that many of these poems composed for and copied for girls were written well after Iceland became Protestant, they still focused on virgin martyr saints, showing that these stories remained important tools for emphasizing the importance of chastity and piety for young Icelandic women even after Catholicism was abolished. Interestingly, much of the post-Reformation poetry on virgin martyr saints made its way to Canada and has been found in manuscript miscellanies owned by women in Manitoba and Saskatchewan. It is on this corpus that my study focuses. So why does this matter? What does an early modern Icelandic conduct literature genre focusing on virgins have to do with 21st century North America? The answer is in short, everything. I would argue that it is possible to trace a continuity of ideas from the origin of conduct literature in the Western European Middle Ages to its manifestations here in North America in the present, though of course we don't refer to it as conduct literature. Instead, it's the many implicit and explicit ways in which society expects young men and women to behave. The modern ideals of conduct have in many ways remained unchanged from the Middle Ages and from what is conveyed in 18th and 19th century Icelandic poetry. For women, both then and now, virginity reigns supreme. From purity balls to dress codes to debates over the property celebrity role models for our daughters, rules for conduct for women control how we view virginity and other virtues today just as much as it did in the Middle Ages. We have simply found new role models and new ways of conveying these ideals. For this reason, we cannot look at our idealization of women's virtue in contemporary culture without an understanding of where it originated and how it developed and the ways in which it did or did not evolve. The ideals first formally articulated 800 years ago control our present thinking and behavior in ways we perhaps have never considered. Knowledge of the past is therefore critical in understanding the present, as I hope my project will demonstrate. Thank you.